Eric Newman, he's one of my favorite comedians to follow on social media, and he has had quite a year. He's going to be, he's on tour now, and he's coming to City Winery this Friday, August 5th. Uh, Eric, welcome back to Chicago. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'm excited. You're just headlined four shows in New York, all sold out. You posted about that, especially, you know, doing comedy for 15 years. I mean, how does this moment in your career feel for you? Oh, man, it feels, it, it really, it's, it's kind of a little surreal, honestly, like, because I started, you know, I started uh, stand up in New York in 2008. And, you know, you just struggle for so long, you can't even ever imagine sort of a real huge winning moment. And, uh, and so I'd been headlining since 2000, I started in 2008. I've been headlining since 2015 in Caroline's just like sort of like I would do like a Tuesday or a Wednesday. And I had so many friends and family here that I would just like fill the room because I'd be like, please, this is a big opportunity. And uh, I did that once one to two times a year for about five years and then the pandemic hit and I've sort of just been growing a social media fan base since then and I was like we got to try New York for a whole weekend and I finally got the opportunity and uh, and we sold them all out and like the shows were amazing I was so happy it's crazy because New York's like the one place where I really get a mix of fans and people who like knew me since I'm nine years old so it's like, it's like, it was like my, my ninth grade English teacher showed up and my barber who did my prom haircut showed up and like, and then just like fans and family and friends. And it was, it was really a truly a, it was amazing. And City Winery is a great venue. So uh, that's the one I'm doing in Chicago too. So I'm excited. It'll, it's going to be fun. You mentioned social media. Let's talk a little bit about that, especially over the past couple of years when comedy clubs were closed and you had to find alternative ways to either communicate with your friends or put your material out there. I mean, that's how I got to see you as far as like a couple of clips and I couldn't stop laughing. And I was like, all right, I'm going to keep, you know, watching this guy. And it's just, you know, it's been fun seeing the journey and the comments and seeing your fan base grow. Um, was there one particular video as far as like that kind of took off social media wise for you? Yeah, I had, you know, it's funny. Um, I had this one video and, and I was, I was pulling in pretty consistently decent numbers as far as growth went um, for, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe like eight months or nine months. And then all of a sudden this one video I did uh, that I recorded at the comedy cellar, which is my home club in New York uh, exploded. Uh, it was a video of me finding out that um, there was a couple in the front row and I investigated and apparently the guy had sex with the girl's mom at some point when they were studying abroad. And, uh, and so it just exploded. And like, I think it got almost 20 million views on TikTok and, uh, you know, six or seven on Instagram. And, uh, and it, I mean, on TikTok, it really exploded. I think it went, my follower count went from like 90,000 followers to like 250 in like a matter of a week and a half or something. It was like insane. Um, and then there had been, you know, then there, I haven't quite hit a video that big since then, but there's definitely been a few that have been like really big videos that, you know, I've had a few, you know, in the, in the 4 million, 5 million range and, you know, stuff like that. But um, that one really, really sort of changed the trajectory of my career a little bit. Um, it was very strange. Because right. we've, we've seen the video, we have the hot dad, the woman who was there with the guy who was her intern, the couple that was both pilots, uh, the guy that was there with his trainer. Um, as far as like, from a comedian standpoint, like, do you have these situations already? Like, if this is what I'm going to see, or are people constantly like surprising you, like who shows up? You know, it's funny because I do this every night now. And, um, and I think people who are fans of mine just sort of understand my style and know what I do. So, you know, I, I would say most of the time, it's somewhere between like there'll always be something somewhat interesting, but because I do it every night and I deal with people every night, there's usually it, there's on an average show, there's not some standout story, but then occasionally I'll just get something that's like, Whoa, this is cr where I'm like genuinely so excited that this is happening, you know? And I think the audience feels that. And I think that's what sort of makes it a really special moment, you know, in the room. Oh, exactly. I mean, it wasn't one of your shows, but I had gone to a, a comedy show once and the, the the person on stage just asked the person in the front row, like, you know, what, what's your job? And that person happened to work for Oprah. And that was 45 minutes of the show. It was like, tell me all these things. And it was all these like funny stories, but it was just crazy because like he had no idea who this person was. And it's like that can just change the whole trajectory. Oh, it's crazy. And, and I genuinely, you know, it's like it's like uh, my style is and I think this is sort of what people have picked up that makes me a little different is like, I'm not really trying to go there to like roast people. I, I, I really want to try to 
figure out situations and like I have a genuine curiosity for sort of like what people are like and what they go through and especially people in different places like you know I grew up one way and I grew up in New York and I'm a New York Jew and and then I go to places that have never met have never been to New York or met I've been I've been gone to places where the people in the crowd have never been to New York or have met a Jew so it's like now I'm now I'm just sort of like being educated on what this upbring what their upbringings were like and sort of like what what life is like in this place as opposed to where I experienced it and like I just want to hear stories and I want to hear interesting things and I want to make them funny and make funny spins on them. And I'm always going to be really honest. That was the one thing I, um, I sort of made this like deal with myself and it, more recently, like you got to just be honest. And, uh, and so for better or worse, I am, I think. And, uh, and, and so that's, that's, that sort of made it, that sort of made it a little easier for me, you know, not having this, um, not, not having these like, uh, um, I guess rules or regulations on what I'm, what I should be saying. Cause I know, you know, me unfiltered, it's still like, I genuinely come from a place of like kindness and love. And like, I don't want to ever actually hurt. Like I get upset. Like if I accidentally hurt somebody's feelings in the crowd, it actually makes me upset. Like I don't want anybody to feel bad. So, um, I think people give me a little bit of wiggle room as far as like the crazy shit I say, because they know it's coming from a place or hopefully they know it's coming from a place of love and, and, and just, just, just trying to make situations funny. You know, are you, are you finding that people are trying to sit in the, in the front to maybe, you know, kind of create that situation or you are like almost like school where you don't want to be picked on and people are kind of going towards like the back or what are you finding as far as like your shows now? You know, it's funny. I, I wasn't sure. And, and, you know, based on like, for example, Chicago, um, you know, you could see the seating chart. And so, you know, I've looked at it a few times and like almost immediately all the front rows are gone and they're more expensive tickets. So I think people who know my style sort of know what they're getting involved with and want to be part of the show, which is exactly what I want. I mean, like that's, you know, that's what I want. I want people to want to be involved. And as long as they're not pains in the ass, you know, as long as like, they're like not there to like steal the shit, like be dicks or whatever, but like, just yeah, have a good time. Yeah. Just have a good time. And it's funny how like, you know, I, what I love sort of the most about this whole thing that's happening to me now is like the diversity that's come. Like I thought, you know, me, my agent and my manager were like, Oh, it's going to be all Jews. And like, it's not, I mean, like we have, like, I certainly like, I appreciate and love when like my Jewish fan base comes out, but I've had like, like, like just like gay couples from like Arkansas are fans. And like, I'm like, I got a message the other day where like on the, on the late show Friday in New York, there were like a lot of like, it was like very gay heavy audience, which I love. Cause I love my gay fans are like probably my favorite fans, honestly. Like, and so they were in the crowd, they were in the front row, a lot of them. And, and I was joking around about it and like flirting jokingly and just having a good time. And I got like a couple messages after from the guys, like, you don't know like how much we love you and how like, thankful we are that you're so supportive of our community and whatever. And I was like, Oh my God, like, this is what I want. And so like, when I get like comments, like this is homophobic or something, I'm like, I'm like, really? Because like all I've heard pretty much uh, mass majority is people who just appreciate the fact that like, as a straight guy, I can get out there and just like have fun. And like, we're all human beings and we could all like joke around together and like, it's no big deal. You know, and, and, and I'm sure like the uh, <clears throat> the, the, the videos that you posted of yeah you know, your room Steve your roommate or flirting with a guy who forgot your name that I think those are some of the videos that probably get get shared and if they're planning a trip to to New York they're like we got to go see this comedian yeah which I love because I am nothing but an ally for for you know uh, gay community and gay rights and you know and so so I just want I, I, and so when I when I hear someone misjudge me or like comment something, again, usually it's a troll or something, but like, I'm just like, oh, you're like so off. Like this couldn't be further from the truth. I want to be up there and I want everybody in the crowd to have a good time. But yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with it, honestly. I mean, it's just been, it's changed my life and I have, I have nobody to thank but the people who come out and see me for that. So come on and see you. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Jimmy Fallon and getting that appearance and what what that did for your career and preparing like the material that you were going to use uh, for that set. Um, it was amazing. I, I it was definitely the moment of my. I mean, if I had to like, I guess pinpoint one moment that was really special. It was probably either getting passed to the Comedy Cellar or that. But 
that was a t my first TV appearance doing stand up on TV. So like, I can't, I can't not remember that. Um, it was a long time, you know, in my eyes, I've been working for it for years. I've been training for it for 15 years. And when I finally got the opportunity, I was like, holy shit, like it's happening. And, uh, and, and yeah, I wasn't really that nervous about it. And obviously like there's, you know, the stakes, you know what they are, but I didn't let any of the negative emotions get to me i said like this is too big to fail like we have to there's no other choice we have to kill this and uh, i feel like we did and um and yeah now i'm working on other ones and other stuff and uh and it was great i i'm so appreciative you know the booker michael cox who is the first one to ever put me on tv for stand-up and i'll never forget that so uh I'm, I'm very i'm very outward in my uh, appreciation for him and uh and and people who give me opportunities like this well, we look forward to, to more opportunities and then seeing you on on television uh you've also posted photos and, and videos of you know some of these bigger name comedians either at the comedy cellar or some of these other clubs um has anybody has anyone surprised you as far as like being a, a super fan of yours or maybe has seen you or i love your material or has checked you out that maybe you were you were surprised by Colin Quinn, who's one of my favorite comedians, uh, pulled me aside at the cellar and was like, I watched your Tonight Show clip. You were great. Um, and, and that meant the world to me. Um, and then, and then uh, you know, uh, Chappelle uh, was on stage one night. I was hosting at the cellar and I was passing by to go to the bathroom about an hour into him on stage. And he said, you know, Eric, I just want to let you know you have a bright future in this. And he said it on stage. And I like looked at the manager at the cellar and was like, did Chappelle just compliment me on stage and she's like yeah he did I was like I'm literally gonna pass out um and and that's the seller I mean the, the, the you get to work with the best and you start realizing you know it kind of pulls the curtain a little open a little bit um as far as it's not this like unbelievable oh my god I'm a I'm around a celebrity anymore it becomes like no these are like my most gifted colleagues and 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 the top of my of my colleagues you know but they are colleagues and um and to get their respect is like amazing um but you know we're all doing it you guys are all doing it and the final thing here um your mom has called you on stage you've told a couple of fun stories growing up uh do you pass things by her before on stage and has, does she come to the shows often she came on Saturday, you know, she'd seen me many, many times over the years. My, my style has transformed since she's seen me. Um, I used to be more of a straight, like, joke, tell, like, I would, like, just tell, tell bits. And now it's transformed into this, like, tell bits involve the crowd. Tell bits involve the crowd. It's more of a mix. And my mom gets very nervous, you know, as a parent, I think, she said to me, she's like, I don't like when you talk to the crowd. I was like, mom, you know, I, I've grown a fan base a lot from that. And she goes, but it makes me very nervous. She gets nervous. She thinks people are going to be mad at me or something and whatever. And occasionally I get someone who's mad at me, but you know, I need, I need just everyone. Like, like my whole thing was like, just trust me. Like, just, I'll make it funny. You know, I definitely say certain things that have people going, like I look in the crowd and they go like that. But then they realize it's okay. Like it's fine. We're not. They're words, and we're not. We're not doing anything bad. It's all out of good, clean fun. Sometimes not that clean, but good fun. Um, and and yeah. So she's supportive. But I think I think she would wanna. You know, she'd rather me just do some like go safer. You know, not talk to people, not talk, bring up their situations, not get personal. But I like getting personal. I mean, that's a big part of me. So, you know, yeah. So my mom's uh, a. <laughs> It's, it's a work in progress with her, but uh, but she's proud of me overall. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Citywinery.com is where you can go ahead and get those tickets again, Friday, August 5th. And we're so excited for, you know, all the exciting things that are happening in your career. And uh, glad to have you back in Chicago. Thanks, Rudy. Will I see you at the show? I'm going to be there. Wonderful. I'll see you there, man. We'll see you there. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.